You're listening to Five Things with Lisa Birnbach. Hi, it's Lisa Birnbach, and I am back from vacation. Can you hear it in my voice? Yes, you can. I know you can because I've been recharged by a vacation, which is something I don't take for granted because I don't get to take one every winter. Maybe that'll change because it was so great. I can barely count to five. That's how relaxed I am. But if you're listening for the first time, this is called Five Things. And its original name before it was changed on Ellis Island was Five Things That Make Life Better for Me. Who else? And I try to find the good in the week to sustain me till the next week. And more importantly, I try to find the good in the week to share with you to help you get through your week or just to spark you to think of the five things that you like for your week. And from now on, I can't even use the verb spark without thinking of Marie Kondo. And what the hell was she doing at the Oscars? I guess she got rid of the host. She had to clean it up. Okay, without further ado, I have just returned from Baja, California, where I went on a trip with some friends. Now, let me be very clear. I did not organize this trip, so I had none of the headaches, none of the organizational problems. My friend Marsha did all of that. I just showed up and, well, first I packed and then I showed up. So I didn't have to do really anything. I didn't have to walk. I didn't have to do sports. I didn't have to entertain. I didn't have to do anything. Now, tell me, what could be bad about a vacation that is just supposed to be for pure relaxation? That would be number one, traveling with friends. Now, I met a new friend on this trip. But the group was very small. I knew everyone else from before, and it sort of firmed up the friendships that we already had begun, as well as gave us new memories that we and inside jokes that we are always going to have, like a stale margarita. Now, I know that's not funny to you, but there are six people who, if they are listening, no pressure or anything, they'll be sort of smiling <laughs> and sort of, <laughs> you know, laughing inside when they hear the phrase stale margarita. But let me say there's no such thing as a stale margarita. Uh, I wouldn't let it sit long enough to get stale. But guacamole, I ate so much guacamole. You know, I usually eat chicken all the time. I thought I was going to turn into an avocado. We had quesadillas. We whale watched. We watched four whales, and then we watched the whales. And I was even able to watch whales while eating guacamole and drinking a margarita. So there you have it. It was perfect. And I am so grateful that we were included. Okay, on this trip, number two. And in a normal week, this discovery would be number one, number two, and number three. But it's just going to be number two this week. And that is an ingenious invention that I never saw before and that I think ought to be the state of art everywhere we are, and that is the light-up menu. Okay, I mean it. It's dramatic. The light-up menu. You don't need to rig the candle right under your hair so it burns so you can see the menu. You don't need to have that stressful moment when you're looking for your reading glasses. You don't need your reading glasses. You don't need to be embarrassed on a blind date and say, oh, I need my reading glasses. It's a light up menu. You can read every word and you can play with it because the light turns on when you open the cover. Open, close, open, close. This is me acting it out for you. It was the greatest thing I ever saw. Our friends at the table compared me to a toddler with a new toy. I am a simple person. A light up menu checks all the boxes. It's fun. It's helpful. It's useful. I think it would contribute to world peace. Just saying. Okay. Let me know if you've ever seen a light up menu because there was one person at our group who was a little ho-hum about it. And I don't think this is a ho-hum thing. A light-up menu. Come on, a light-up menu. Why aren't you more excited? It's one of the greatest things ever. Okay, number three. You know what? It's March 1st, and it's still winter. And in fact, on the radio, I heard that the winter is 
planning. And the winter must have spoken to the meteorologist and said, no, I'm here for a while. I'm going to be here till at least April. I heard that with my own two ears. So here's my thing about winter. I don't really hate it as long as I'm dressed right for it because I hate to be cold. I was cold in Mexico, so, you know, I just hate to be cold. So here's what you do. You have to dress right. You have to wear lots and lots of layers. But then when you're walking around briskly or in a subway, in an office, in an elevator, waiting for the elevator, going to your apartment, going to a friend's apartment, you get hot and cold and hot and cold and hot and cold, right? It's hard to be comfortable in a northeastern or mid-Atlantic winter. So here's my big advice for you. The worst thing about being cold is your head and your feet and your hands. But I can even live without gloves. But hat you need, sorry, you just do. And feet need to be warm. And I am advising you with number three, one of the great things is buying a pair of sheepskin inner soles for your boots. It's so simple. They have them at almost every shoemaker. And if they don't have your size, go to the other shoemaker across the street. And if they don't have your size, go online and order one pair. And then you just stick them in your boots. And your feet are going to be much happier. And you will be much happier. And I give you that. You're welcome. Number four. Some of you are probably in book clubs or book groups. Raise your hand if you are. Why do I see all the same hands? Anyway, I was in a book club for a bit until... I became the most unpopular person and was sort of voted off the island. So I know that they can be fraught with politics and who likes whom and who used to date somebody's boyfriend and just whatever, all kinds of issues that make you not want to do it. Or I'm in the book club, but they already passed on all the books I suggested. Or I already read this book before. I don't want to read it again. Or I have too much to do. I can't read another book. Or I have too much to do. I don't want to go to the book club. Or this book club, we haven't talked once about books, but I know I like Sancerre. You know, they turn into wine tasting and they go wrong. They can go wrong in so many ways. But have you ever thought of starting a little, and I do mean little, ad hoc book club or book group? This is what I'm about to do. And it's thanks to my friend Jamie. She sent me a book. It is called Last Boat Out of Shanghai, The Epic Story of the Chinese Who Fled Mao's Revolution. It's written by Helen Zia. I know nothing about this book. I wasn't expecting to see this book in the mail. My friend wrote, let's read this book together. So guess what? We're going to read it together and discuss it. Now, the beauty of this ad hoc book club is that it's only the two of us. And we live 3,000 miles apart from one another. So this will give us an excuse or an opportunity to talk to one another more frequently. And we'll talk about a book. I mean, I think it's kind of perfect. Anybody can do this. You don't have to do this with a friend who's far away. And, you know, there it is. Ta-da! A book group that isn't just talking about wine, that isn't just talking about gossip. I'm not saying we won't gossip on the phone, but, you know, and it can meet whenever you need to meet. It doesn't have to be when you have a job interview or when you have a soccer game to go to for your kid or when your husband is going on a guy's trip. You can have it at your own convenience. It's almost as convenient as a book club for one, but I think with two it's better because you can exchange ideas with somebody. So I'm looking forward to that. And the idea of that made my week better. Number five is going to be Robert Mueller. That is not a surprise, I think, to any of you regulars. I honestly did not think about Robert Mueller while I was on vacation. And according to my scientific research, that means I don't have a crush on him. It's just admiration. I know I sound defensive, but if I had a crush, I would have been thinking about him all the time, writing Lisa and Robert Mueller in the sand. Robert, how's Lisa? Fine. You know, I would have done all that, but I did none of it. I did wear 
my I Heart Robert Mueller t-shirt on the beach while I took a walk, which is combining two of my favorite things on the planet. But I don't have a crush on him. I do admire him. And those are my five for the week. Thank you all for listening. Uh, Here's the begging part where I ask you to subscribe. I'm available on many platforms, on iTunes, on Stitcher, on YouTube, and on my website, lisabernbach.com, and links to all those other places are there. I'd love to hear from you, so please write to me. There's a box where you can address anything to me, and I get it, believe it or not, and I respond, believe it or not. Until next week, stay cozy and act natural. Bye-bye. That was Five Things with Lisa Bernbach. New episodes every Friday, if she remembers.